Hello, hello, Pam. We are live. Yay. <laughs> That's great. Exactly. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Aaron Roy with Teachable. Uh, thank you for joining a, a very different, very exciting, and I think a, going to be a very fun workshop today with Pam Coey. We're going to get started in just a few moments. Um, if this is your first time joining us in a workshop, usually we take the first few moments just to make sure everything works. Before we kick it to Pam and all the fun students we have joining us today, we just want to make sure all the technology works uh, and that people can see and they can hear us okay before we really jump into the, the meat and potatoes of what we're doing today. So I do see folks saying hello and where you're joining from. It would be wonderful if you could let us know in the chat, you know, you could hear us, you could see us okay, um, you know, and let us know where you're, you're joining from, right? Uh, and a lot of folks here know Pam already. If you don't, and this is your first time, you're in for a treat today. And let's give folks a second. Pam, say something. Let's make sure everything okay. works. Hi, everybody. Yeah, please say hello where you're from. Um, it's always great to see. I've got my iPad on my left side, and I'm watching all of you guys coming in and saying hello. It's so exciting. Um, so thank you so much, and I recognize so many of you. Um, Judith says there's an echo. Can you guys all hear okay? If you can't hear okay, could you please let Aaron know? Because um, it could be that we can correct something on our end. Yeah, um, and I'm seeing folks say they can hear it as well. Um, okay, uh, I hear loud and clear. I'm not sure what that was. Uh, if folks, you, you, if anything sounds super weird or echoey today, uh, just let us know in the chat. We'll do our best to try to resolve it, uh, especially because today we're doing something a little different and we have some of Pam's students joining us on stage. So that's very good. You could see and hear us. We're going to get started in just a few moments. Just some housekeeping items um, for anyone who joins us late. Uh, you know, first off, there will be a replay available. So, you know, don't don't feel bad if you want to go back and watch a section. Um, also, don't feel bad if you join halfway through. Um, if you're watching this 30 minutes later, you don't have to watch it all in one day. We're going to send out a link after in case you want to watch this replay. Um, I've watched Pam's workshops, even though I'm the host, and I can tell you they're very therapeutic. They are the rewatchability is very high. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I said it to my mom last time. I was like, check wow. this out. This is going to be good. <laughs> uh, cool. So in just a second, we're going to kick this off. It sounds like folks can see us. It sounds like folks can hear us. Pam, before I start bringing the students up on stage today, uh, I would love for you to give a little bit about your background, give a little bit about what we're gonna, what's going to happen today, and then you know we'll start bringing these students up. Okay. Well, thank you, Aaron. And, and uh, thank you so much on behalf of Teachable for inviting me. That was um, awfully nice of you. And yes, um, everyone, this is kind of experimental today in that I'm doing a live painting demo. Usually I just talk. But today I, um, of course, didn't keep it simple. I thought, well, why not work in encaustic where I'm using a propane torch? Because, you know, everything else would have been just way too safe. <laughs> so anyways, yes, um, I, my name is Pam Coey and I live in Hamilton, Montana. And uh, I'm in my studio right now. I've been painting for 30 years or 30 plus years. Um, I keep saying 30, but I keep, you know, I should say it's more than that. And um, what else? I love painting in acrylic and cold wax and oil and encaustic and encaustic monotype. And um, I have an online school. It's artandsuccess.com. So if you have never been to that website, that's where all of my online courses are. And um, yeah, I just, I chose to work in encaustic today because um, I'm just about to launch my mini course, and a lot of you already know about that. It'll launch on March 1st. Um, I'm really curious how many of you on the this chat today uh, are familiar with Encaustic. If you could kind of say, um, I'm a beginner, or I'm intermediate, or I'm advanced, because I really am not quite sure, um, you know, where people are coming from. So, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Cool. And that's going to take a smidge of delay. So we'll let some of the folks in the chat say that. Um, you know, with that background, Pam, are you ready? We can bring these students up and, and yeah. really have them introduce themselves before we really get into to actually working today. Yeah, so let me bring everyone up on stage one at a time here. Cool. I think I got everyone. Um, so I'm going to just call on each one of you to just say hello. You know, let us know where you're joining us from today and what medium you'll be working in. Uh, no particular order. It's the order I could see it. Lisa, why don't you go first? Hi, I'm Lisa DeBates. I'm in the Seattle, Washington area, and I'm going to be working on my canvas here in mixed media and acrylic. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Tina, Tina, you're next up, according to my screen. 
Hi, my name is uh, Tina and I am from Redwood City in Bay Area, south of San Francisco, and I'll be working in oil and coal wax. Very cool. Thank you, Tina. Uh, Rob, you're up next. Okay. Hi, my name is Rob Smales. I'm uh, here in Germany, in Hamburg. I'm going to be working today. I've got paper taped up on the wall uh, in mixed media, acrylic, possibly some spray paint, some collage, some pastels, all that kind of thing. Ooh, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Rachel. Oh, Rachel, you're on mute. All good. Um, my name's Rachel. I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm going to be doing mixed media, uh, acrylic, dry marks, and collage. Very cool. Janina, you're up next. Hi, I'm Janina Fisher, and I live in Perth, Ontario, Canada, and I'm going to be working in cold wax medium and foil today. Yes. Thank you so much. Last but not least, Claudia. Hi, <laughs> I'm Claudia Mejia Willett. I'm from um, in Rochester, New York, and I'm going to be working on cold, with uh, cold wax medium. I'll be using uh, collage and uh, jelly plate. Nice. Very, very cool. Well, Pam, with that, I'm going to put the students backstage. We're going to bring your screen up, and we'll be checking in today with, with some of those wonderful students that just introduced themselves to see how they're progressing. Does that sound good, Pam? Sounds wonderful. Thank you all for joining me today. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All, all right, right, Pam, up, up backstage as well. The floor is yours. Bye, Aaron. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to explain a little bit um, about Epostic. Um, I've done it since 2008. I learned this medium uh, well before I learned cold wax and oil. And um, as some people know that you've watched my YouTube video called My Encaustic Life, where I try to just give you kind of a background of why it is that I love it. And um, I'm still curious how many people that are on this call right now know what encaustic is. Uh, I can't exactly watch my iPad while I'm, I'm uh, looking at you now, but let me just say that for those of you who are new to encaustic, um, encaustic means burning in, and it comes from the Greek word encausticos. And um, my love of encaustic happened when I saw an encaustic painting and it was so smooth and lustrous that I, I just couldn't even believe what I was looking at. And so um, I, I started to work in this medium and I thought I would do a demo in it. And I'm about to launch my mini course. A lot of you know about it already. And also um, I will be one of 26 instructors in a one year masterclass all in encaustic. So if you love encaustic and you're, you know, you might be a beginner, intermediate or, you know, advanced. Um, if you don't already know about this, it's called Painting with Fire. And it's um, put together by uh, Laura Murphy in Ireland. And you can go to my, um, my special affiliate link which is encausticmasterclass.com. And if you sign up with my link, you get my free mini course in encaustic. So I'm gonna turn my screen down now and get started. I wanna kind of just show you um, the tools, uh, the basics, and let me just get this situated right. Uh, I've got a heated palette on my right here. And this is what I'm doing. I'm painting with molten wax. So if you've never seen that before, um, I know you can't see my entire palette, but you can see some of the colors and uh, just all of us today, all the people that I've invited to, um, to be on this call, we are all going to be doing what I call the play stage. And I talk about this in my powerful design and personal color course. And so I'm going to start by, this is my propane torch. So the heating in process requires heat and I choose to use a propane torch. So bear with me while I heat this up for a second. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool for just a second. This is one that I just did um, the other day as kind of an example for the mini course, um, showing you a lot of different techniques. And actually a lot of this is dry mark making material. You've heard the other artists joining in today are um, also going to be doing a lot of mixed media work. Here are some smaller paintings that um, six by six inches. 
And I love to work small. I love to work large. You know, it doesn't matter to me what size it is. So now this is warm, right? It's warm to the touch. What can you do um, when the surface is warm? And I have already put two coats of beeswax and one coat of encaustic medium on here for those who um, work in this medium. So what I'm going to do, just for fun, um, one of the things I love about this medium is texture tools. So I went to the thrift store and got myself a whole bunch of texture tools. They're really fun. And the only thing about it is you got to kind of know when uh, to use them in terms of like the surface. So this is warm and this is a good time to start making some marks. So I'm just going to try to, you're not going to see them um, yet, but that's kind of part of the fun is that I can't really see it either. I'm going to show you how it is that you go from not seeing it to seeing it. Okay, so I'm going to just, this is um, something I got at the hardware store. And when the wax is just the right kind of warm, you know, you're able to make all these really wonderful impressions with the various things that you find. You might find them on a walk, or you might find them at a store, thrift store. Here's some hardware cloth. And this is, um, because this is the play stage, a lot of times um, I'm just, I'm not, <laughs> certainly not thinking very much, uh, as most of you know. Okay, so I'm, this is like a saw, a chainsaw chain, I believe. And I'm just going to make some marks like that to kind of press it in. All right, that's pretty crazy. I really don't know what it's going to look like yet. And the beauty of the play stage is that you don't really care. It's not about trying to make something pretty. This is like a pattern wheel. I love what this does. It makes these little dots. Okay, and I can do this forever, but I don't want to take too much time doing that. All right, so once you've got your board, um, you can't see you know anything yet. I'm going to take an RNF pigment stick. This is graphite gray. And I just decided to clean off the end. And I'm going to bring out those marks now. And these are not pigment sticks. Uh, anyone who's used them before knows how luscious and beautiful they are. Now, I could use a number of ways to spread this around. I'm going to use a paper towel and try to rub it into all those marks I just made. So this is kind of like an early step, you know, if you love texture and if you love, you know, mixed media. So encaustic isn't only about using encaustic paint. You're going to see that I'm going to use a lot of different mixed media materials from pan pastels to Sorel transfer paper, just depending on the time that we have. Um, so this board went from plain encaustic medium. It had a warm cast to it. And now it actually has some texture. So I'm just going to hold that up for a second so you can kind of see what that looks like. You can kind of see some of the materials. Um, now the RNF pigment stick went into these uh, impressions that I made. And so the idea though, is that you kind of, in the early stage, want to take off almost all of the oil. So for that, you just need some cooking oil. So put that on a paper towel and just rub that a little bit more. The reason being that a little bit of oil paint on the surface is fine before you fuse it, but if you have too much, then that can get in the way of the integrity of the next layer. And the idea of fusing in means that before I do anything else, I will want to fuse this lightly in with my propane torch. And I do like to use a propane torch for most types of encaustic. There are times when I'll use a heat gun, but I'm going to be using a torch. So now you can see that I have taken off most of the oil, but it has shown you the texture that I put down there. So that's kind of how I start. Now I'm going to fuse it in. I'm just elevating it on a silicone molder, and I've got parchment paper underneath because it catches the drips and... <laughs> That's the burning in process. So um, probably can't see that too well, 
Now I've got all these colors here and I do love color. And because I'm playing right now, I'm not gonna worry about anything. I'm just I'm not using a limited palette. Well, sometimes I do, but not. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm just gonna have fun. So here is some diluted yellow. Um, here is some pink. And you can kind of see how uh, the, the, um, the graphite, not the, yeah, the graphite RNF pigment stick, uh, it is still like, there's still a little bit on the surface there. So like even here, it melted that away. And, um, so I'm going to try some different textures here. The idea is just to get a lot of color on here first. Now these are mostly opaque colors and, um, I like to just have fun and not think about anything. And you wanna keep your uh, colors at about 185 degrees. So I am monitoring the temperature. That's always a very good idea. And that prevents smoke. Um, it is a very safe medium as long as you are very aware of what temperature everything is melting at. Okay, so I've done that much and I want to add some graphite powder. That is just a dry medium. And I'm gonna sprinkle some like this. Take a paper towel. I'm not gonna worry if it goes over colors and you'll see why in a minute. It's just really a lot of fun. There's something about graphite powder that I really love too, is that when you burnish it, um, it, it turns into like this metallic sort of um, beautiful sheen. I'm going to blow off the rest of this powder. Okay, the thing about encaustic too is that <clears throat> it's partly putting the stuff on, like I've just done. You can see what a mess it is. It's, it's supposed to be ugly, okay? <laughs> Heads up, the play stage is supposed to be ugly. But um, the fun thing for me anyways in encaustic is that it's also about um, taking it off. So I have a razor blade here. It's a really good way to, um, to take things away. So you put the graphite on and you can come all the way back down to the white of the board if you want to. So, and then I can come over the green and reveal that. And you can also recycle a lot of the wax you take off. You don't, you know, you can recycle it. And I talk about that in my mini course. I've generated a lot of paint that I have to melt down that's being collected in Ziploc bags. So um, I just want to show you a few things here that are kind of fun. The many ways that I will play. And because I do love mark making, it's just a tool that is fun and it you can see how it pulls that wax off in a very fine thread. Make sure I'm using the right part of that. Okay, so now I'm going to fuse this in again. Now what can happen is you have full control over how much heat to apply. Now if you're my son, you're going to heat it for a long time and um, watch the wax swirl like it'll marble. But I, I do a, a kind of a quick sweep, except I might want a little bit of that moving here. And just let it cool. And um, even if, uh, once it's cooled down though, you can actually start to do other things. So let's see here. It's, it's a lot of layering. So the whole thing about encaustic medium is that you're doing a lot of layering. So I've got like a very thinned out, this is um, alizarin crimson thinned out. So it's a glaze and I've got my, my heating implements here are, most of them I got at the thrift store. So you don't have to go and buy a lot of stuff. A lot of it you can get at the thrift store. Pancake griddles, electric frying pans, and I even have a crock pot. 
So here's a glaze being applied. And you can see how, you know, and when you buy, if you were to buy an encaustic paint, just know that you can thin it out to become a glaze and that block is gonna last you a really long time. So yes, um, if you decide to buy your paints, for those of you that are in my mini course, just know that they last a very long time. You do not have to use them full strength. Okay, so here's some gray. I'm being a little bit careful not to um, go uh, like this is one layer. Um, now I'm not gonna put too many layers on top of that because I have not fused that in yet. Okay. And then I ask myself, you know, what don't I have? What haven't I done yet? I've got another glaze over here, which is like a yellow, but I'm gonna change that color a little bit. Added some quinacridone magenta, which is also a glaze. So now I'm changing that color. And I have all different sizes of brushes that are kind of being heated on my palette. This will be a different color um, somewhat than what I have there, I think. So let's try that. It's a little darker. Just a little bit darker, not too much. Okay, I'm going to fuse that in. see or not I'm not sure but if I hold it up there maybe you can see that um, this area here uh, which was all the graphite that is really uh, split apart and that's due to the heat and I wanted that to happen so that's one of those really cool effects so you can come back in and you can do some of the things that I was doing before you know maybe I want to create some line in here um, it's a little bit soft a little bit uh, warm still but you kind of just get what you get. And you kind of, it's, it's one of those things where you have to figure out when is the right time to pull wax away. You know, when is the right time to say use a pan pastel. Let's see what other tools I have. Even like this, you can still continue to texture that. When it's just the right warmth, like that's pretty good, I think. Um, you come in like this. And I'm working on an ampersand um, panel, which I love. It's probably one of my most favorite surfaces of all. And take a bamboo skewer. I'm just kind of texture here too. So. These are finer marks. Okay, so now I'm just looking at the time. Why don't we, hey, Aaron, let's take a look and see what others are doing right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Pam, I gotta say, that's the first time I've been in a workshop <laughs> with a blowtorch um, and, and a chainsaw blade. Um, Lisa and Rob, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm going to bring you on stage in just a second because I can see that both of you have uh, got great angles. And I, let's bring you up. So we have Lisa and we have Rob. Wow. Hi. Oh, Rob, is I'm going to actually pull you down for a second, Rob, just because you're a bit pixelated. We'll try again in a few moments. Um, I'm going to bring Rachel up while we get that sorted out. Hey, Rachel. You're on mute. Okay. There you go. Hey, Hi, so we're working in, in wet and dry media, black and white, monochromatic today. Nice. I'm just playing, <laughs> having fun, making a mess. Lisa, you did all that while I was doing what I was doing? You're way ahead yeah. of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I work pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, looking good. And yeah. Awesome. Thanks well, um, you guys want to talk about what do you feel about the play stage? Like, what do you, are you thinking? Are you not thinking? I don't think too much. No, I just kind of smear paint around and, you know, use different mediums to spread it and different tools. You know, I try to 
like you say, what haven't I done? What what haven't I used? And, you know, I just try to use different things and have fun and create different marks and stuff. And, you know, then I just kind of let it show me where it wants to go. So, yeah, it's fun to play. Good. It's my and how favorite. And um, yeah, I have to work hard at playing. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a hard time turning off the brain, but, you know, I'm practicing. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was hard for me, too. It took me a whole year to learn how to play. Yeah. Um, do you guys feel like uh, the whole stage of play has given you um, more permission and, and less fear about getting started? So much, yes, because I used to be realism strictly. And so then when I started abstract, I was so afraid to start. And so, yeah, once, you know, uh, you talked about play and I saw how you did stuff on your YouTube videos, then, yeah, it just freed me up. Good. Wonderful. I, I feel like it helps you not get tight. Yeah. Quickly, you know, yeah. So that part, I, I'm a pretty uh, tight person. So this is helpful to not get tight. Well, well, you do these lovely watercolors. Um, and so I, I so admire that. And I'm curious how the play stage plays into when you work in watercolor, you know, um, no working yeah. on that. I don't smear paint around like you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little harder with watercolor, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks guys. So keep painting. Thank okay? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll so, check in with some more students in a bit, Pam. Whenever you want, just call me. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to um, play on another board because, um, yeah, I like to um, work on many things at a time. So this is kind of my traditional way to be working. It, it's kind of like working in a series. Um, here's another 12 by 12 inch panel just to kind of keep things sort of the same. Uh, before I start putting the color on, you know, it is it's often good just to warm that surface up a little bit. Okay, so let me just, I'm, I'm trying to think of like different things that I can do here. So let me start out with this glaze over here. I've been um, playing a lot with glazes lately. And the beautiful thing about it is as they overlap, and, and also like one thing I love about this medium, and it probably has to do with my tremendous impatience for everything. <laughs> I do like to see things happen quickly. Now you can overlap this um, before I fuse it in. I mean, that that's a very thin layer of overlap. So, you know, the main thing is that you're gonna fuse it in. And so I might change that color a little bit, just put a few drops of the quinacridone in there. A little bit of paint goes a long way. And then I will fuse this in. Just lovely colors. I'm gonna fuse it in now. And if you guys, any of you who are working in the encaustic medium uh, in the chat, please pop in, you know, how long you've been doing it. Um, what do you what do you love most about the encaustic medium? And, you know, when did you get started? How how large do you work? Because working large is, is definitely um, <laughs> well, I work on large cradle panels when I work large. And so um, I think I pulled something in my arm the other day. <laughs> I was working toward the, the radio show and um I think I hurt my arm. I didn't know what, what had caused it, but I do think it's from um, this certain technique I was using called intarsia. So anyways, it, it'll it'll be fine. It's just that, uh, you know, the boards, I was working on a four foot by six foot and it got a little heavy. So I know a lot of people like to scale up, but when you do that, you know, you kind of have to deal with bigger tools and heavier boards and, and all those things. So, um, but this is a very, as you can see, very sensitive, surface. Uh, the mark making that happens when you press tools into it, that's that's one way to make a mark. 
but then obviously you've got your paint and you can mix your paints. So just like you do any other medium, I mean, there's so many uh, things you can do in this medium that are somewhat like other mediums. Uh, you can use RNF pigment sticks and you can use a lot of the same dry media like art graph. I have art graph here. I have my woodies, um, pan pastel. So if you already have that kind of stuff, then you'll find that you can actually use a lot of those same things. And that's really fun. It's nice when you don't have to start all over with everything. Okay, I made a little bit more of a warm color. Um, Aaron, is anyone asking any questions? Does anyone have any questions right now? Pam, we have so many questions. <laughs> and and, and the, uh, the comments have been so wonderful at, at helping each other. Um, so folks, I, I'm going to try to grab some of the questions. Uh, sure. Just, But you know, if I miss it, we'll try to leave time at the end. Uh, yeah. One of the ones I saw, and I'm going to bring some of these questions on screen, Pam. You, don't, awesome. you can't see them, but I, I'm going to do it for folks oh, watching oh. this after. Um, yeah. Wendy asks, where do you get your boards? Uh, ampersand? Well, okay. The ampersand boards, they're really available, um, you know, just about anywhere. Dick Blick, Amazon, um, uh, you know, you can look up ampersand as a company. They're a family owned company, which is one reason why I absolutely love to give them business. Uh, they are in Buda, Texas and, um, just wonderful customer service and excellent videos. So I would just say that, you know, I think you'd be hard pressed not to find them and they come in all different sizes and it's already treated with RNF gesso, which means that's why it's white, which is lovely. Like I love that part. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Pam. And again, I'm only going to grab a few right now. We'll, we'll leave a bunch for the end. One of the things that I've actually seen quite a few people uh, bring up is just like, you know, the, perhaps the fear of switching to the blowtorch, right? Because it is quite the leap. <laughs> Can you just talk a bit about like how that journey was for you? Because obviously oh. probably didn't start with the, the huge blowtorch, but you, you know. Um, you know, let's see. Uh, I did have a heat gun, but that is a totally different situation. Uh, I would say if you're a little bit shy with the uh, propane, then yeah, start with the heat gun and, and that'll get you really far. There are some techniques that you actually kind of need the heat gun you can't be you can't use really um the propane torch it might if you're working on say multimedia artboard you're going to want to use a heat gun if you're trying to work with say collage material a lot of times that's going to mean you want to use a heat gun propane um gosh yeah there's a bit of a learning curve but actually it's not um as bad as you might think it is it's just like anything getting used to it i think and I just love it because like mine, my particular one has a, a switch where like you press this red button and, and then you get the flame going and then you hit the silver button and then you don't touch anything. You're just like free to, to heat it. And then when you're done, you press this red button again and it, it all goes off. So it's um, just like anything, you get used to it. And um, once you, once you kind of use it, then um, for me anyways, and I actually have another, I have a, like, you know, when you go camping, you've got those large propane tanks. I actually have a nozzle hose connected to that. And so, yeah, I, I again, I, I just tend to really like the propane. So any other questions or? Yeah, I'm going to grab one more. And if you want, we can either check in with some students yeah, or we cruise on this one. The one I wanted to grab is just because I know it's a common question is just regarding like ventilation and toxicity, right? Yes. Uh, can you speak a bit to that? And perhaps I know we showed your workshop in the bit the beginning, but just maybe speak a bit more about your setup. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a great question. And I'm really glad you asked it. Uh, the one thing about uh, working with beeswax. So this is um, encaustic medium is made with um, two components. It's made with Damar resin, which is this chunky stuff and beeswax. Uh, and you melt them together and you make these, um, you can make your own encaustic medium. Okay, so you make your own encaustic medium. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't see that. Um, it looks like this, and you can make it very inexpensively and that kind of thing. Now, the one thing you have to watch out for is smoke. So when you heat your griddle, you heat your paints, like I've got you know, heated paint here. I have an infrared thermometer, and I just point it, just like during COVID, you know, everybody's having one of these pointed at their forehead. I point it at my paints. And you just want to make sure that temperature is like between, say, 
you've got a range between 150 and say 200 and you're not going to see smoke. It's when you get up to well above 200 that you might see some smoke. I think that when I first got started, I had no fancy ventilation. I had an open window. I had a window that slid open. I had a door that could open to the outside. I was in a garage and that was all great. Uh, now I'm in a, a, a closed, I'm below ground. So I actually had to bring some ventilation in, but it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just an open window and open door. But yes, that's a great question. Thank you for that, Pam. Yeah. Um, if it works for you, there, if, if it's cool with you, what I would love yeah. to do is we could hold some of the questions towards the end. I know we've yeah. put some time for that. And for everyone in the chat, you know, I really, really love the, the community that folks are helping each other. Um, and just, yeah, if I missed your question, I'm sorry. You know, it, it, at the end, we'll leave some time and you could re-ask it because there, there's been so many comments. Some of the questions are buried. Sure. And if you want to check in on two more artists, um, you know, so let's see if uh, they are like Rob, maybe he's not pixelated anymore. <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, Rob and Janina, if you guys are ready, I'm going to bring you all on stage. We can see you, Rob. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's get Janina up here. Hey, Janina. Here. Hey. hey, guys. That's good. That's good, Rob. You're not pixelated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying what you're doing too, Pam. Great. Oh, <laughs> well, what are you doing? I want to know what you're doing. Um... Yeah, it's developed pretty quickly. I've blocked in a load of color. Um, um, I'm just about to put some newspaper on, some beautiful. some collage. So um, uh, outline with your hands, like where the the painting is. And oh, sorry, wall, yeah. your wall is actually quite colorful as well. So I'm trying to get. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like this. Beautiful, nice. It's, it's a pretty messy studio wall. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that spray paint you're using? Uh, this top corner was yeah. Yeah. And the rest of it is just um, acrylic with paintbrushes for now. Oh, yeah. I like the Papa Orange even now. Yeah. And, Thanks. And That's also a bit, of, a bit of collage. Okay. <laughs> your, your style just comes right through even in the early stage. Are you enjoying the play stage? I'm loving it. That's, I mean, that's, I guess, the whole point, right? Having fun. And yeah. Um, I just have to say, I mean, this is the moment to say it. The playing that I learned from you on your course, the uh, PDPC. It's just so liberating. It's sort of changed everything because, uh, you, you know, you just I kind of, yeah, it was completely new. I used to start paintings, you know, with a clear plan, what I wanted to do and just aiming for perfection. And you end up getting really disillusioned and it's kind of a negative experience. Whereas if you just lose all that and just, you know, get in this childlike um, mode, uh, it's, it's just so freeing. Yeah. I, I think that um, because I've seen so much of your work where it's actually more like there's semi-realism and there's total abstraction. I love how you're always pushing all the boundaries. Like you're going to that extreme and this extreme, but within all those extremes, I, I always see that play. And then, but even in your play stage, mm -hmm. I start to see you, which I think is pretty, pretty amazing. So, yeah. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Janina? What are you up to? Well, I am, um, I... So that kind of where I'm at. Uh, I came. To, I came to Pamela basically watching her YouTube videos, and again, the play stage was what really drew me to you, Pam, um, because I'm a relatively new artist and I've been dabbling in acrylic. And then I took your uh, powerful design and personal color course and started to use the cold wax medium and oil, and trying to work in abstract is really difficult and i'm very much like who was it rachel who said she's pretty uptight it's got to be perfect and so actually letting go and playing is the most liberating thing so for anybody out there who's never done art before anybody watching it is just the most fabulous thing to go back to being like a kid and just make so, yeah. circles and squares and shapes and colors and letting it be ugly. I love that Pamela says, you know, it needs to be in the ugly stage. Um, <laughs> and, and then you can develop it. And in the powerful design and personal color court, she teaches you how to develop it. But having somewhere to start for me where I have total permission to just enjoy myself and be yeah. a kid and play with color or 
play with a limited palette. So I'm doing one of the um, homework assignments from the Powerful Design course where you're only using one color plus black and white. So I'm using brush purple and blue and just learning how to get different colors and textures and lines. Love it. I, I'm having such a ball. Oh, I'm this so happy. Yeah, thank you, Tanita. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Yes, thank you, Pam. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> So, Aaron, do you want to come back and, and uh, tell us what's going on? What are you doing? Are you painting too? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I'm, I'm here watching the YouTube comments, trying to get ready, making sure oh. that I'm, I, I've learned so much today, like I, in terms you. of the kind of caustic and these different components. So, okay. nice. me, I'm, I'm having the time of my life getting to be a part of this workshop. So, that's what's going on over here. Okay, that's great. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, well. I'm just going to keep uh, working on this. I guess I can turn my uh, camera down again. And and if you want to ask questions, like I'm perfectly fine answering questions while I paint. That's what I, you know, like I'm really used to doing that. So if yep. you want to do that, it's fine too. What I would love is if folks, if I know I've missed a bunch of questions and we've had so many comments since then, if folks can actually put in the comments, uh, you know, if you have an open question for Pam, we could start actually bringing some of these up and, and kind of going through them. So feel free to put them in the chat and, and I'll try to bring these up with this. As they Sorry about the noise. Oh, blowtorch is good. Um, I'm going to try one more thing on air too here because I actually want to see something. I should be able to make your screen bigger while I do this. So okay. sure. while folks put questions in the comments, I'm also going to test something because I want to make Pam's screen bigger while I grab questions. Perfect. Nice. Cool. I'm going to go on mute for a second, Pam. I'm going to look for some comments or uh, look for some questions and All right. let's keep going. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so anyways, I did recently post a YouTube video. It's just called My Encaustic Life. If anybody's interested, it kind of shows my history in this medium. And I'm really amazed at how much it has influenced everything I did since learning this medium. Uh, I started with watercolor when our two boys were young. I did that for about 10 years. Plateaued, um, took a 10 year break. And then I got back into like acrylic mixed media. And uh, that was great. Just, you know, kind of started painting again and, and that felt really nice. But uh, then I, that's when I saw this encaustic painting in 2008. And at that time, our boys were growing older, and I decided to go to grad school. So I got my MFA um, at the University of Montana School of Art. But uh, I, um, it was right at the time that I started grad school that I had just learned encaustic. So I was kind of like, how can I use encaustic, you know, to in my thesis work and, and that kind of thing. And everything just for me seems very organic, like how things unfold. And I don't, I don't know. It's just interesting how uh, my mediums have changed, but but there's a lot of crossover. Um, I'm always trying to be true to my voice, regardless of what medium I'm working in. Um, and I, I try to let the medium sort of do a little bit about what it wants to do, but but I also know what I want. So it has to comply with me as well. So I, I'm very much about color and design. I don't really, I'm not a really um, like, I, I just don't think technique is ever enough. And so my course on um, the powerful design of personal color emphasizes color and design regardless of what medium you're working in. And um, I just feel that that is really gonna be the most important thing you're gonna learn to get the results that you really want, to find your personal voice. And um, technique is great. Of course, you have to do some technique, but when you know what you want and you know what your voice is, you will figure it out. Um, the technique can follow um, once you've done your other kind of homework. <laughs> Yeah, this is just very much a layering process. And you can kind of see that the beautiful thing that I love about encaustic, I mean, there are a few things. Okay, I'll, there, there are a few that I, I just absolutely have to tell you. Um, number one is pretty fast. You can kind of see how quickly you can create something. And, 
you know, the, as far as like the explore and the clarify stages, you know, the finesse is what I'll do with my woodies and my pan pastels and my Sorrel transfer paper and all that kind of stuff. But the other thing I love about it is that there's really no cleanup. And I know that it's really pathetic to say that, but um, you just unheat your appliances and you're done. Like there's no having to clean all these tools. And I think that that's, that's actually kind of one of the things I enjoy about it. So yeah. Any other questions out there, Aaron? Yeah, Pam, I'm going to grab a few now. Um, so for folks who are joining us late, I think uh, there's been quite a few questions about the name of the board with wax you're using as a starter. Can you oh, re repeat yes. some of that stuff again? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to turn it around. Um, now, you probably can't see that very well, but it says encaustic board. It's made by Ampersand. So encaustic, but you spell out the word and then it's B-O-R-D. It's made by Ampersand, A-M-P-E-R-S-A-N-D. And they have so many different kinds of boards. They have, uh, I've got these little samples. I'm one of their ambassadors. And so here's, they come in all different sizes, uh, clay board, scratch board, aqua board, pastel board. And they sell frames that are just meant for this, you know, particular size. Um, and it's just, again, it's just such an awesome company. Um, I'm going to be doing a, um, a chat with Dana, who is um, the owner there pretty soon. It'll be on my YouTube channel because I, I reached out to him and I was like, you know, I just really want people to know about your product. And so um, stay tuned for that. It's coming. Thank you for that, Pam. Um, in, in, in the beginning, right, you had your whole box of goodies. And I, I remember specifically you had like the, the, the chainsaw chain. Um, and you also at one point uh, had a small roller tool with a light brown handle. Um, one, of the, one of our viewers has asked what that was. This one, right? Probably this one. Um, yeah, I, I think it um, yeah, probably was this one. And I this is a very funny thing. Like when I teach workshops and I, I've taught workshops around the world, this one that I went to was in Texas and I was walking around. Um, it was with, um, it was the encaustic, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, sorry about that. But anyways, um, one of the, it was a cold wax and oil workshop and um, one gal had like all three of these and I was like, what are those? Where do you get them? There's like a third one here too, but I don't have them in front of me. Oh, here it is. It's really big. These are uh, listed on my resource page because I can't remember the name, but they have to do with tires of all things. Uh, so if you go to artandsuccess.com and then click on resources, scroll down and, and, and they have to do with like they, they deaden tires. I don't know. I don't ask me. I don't really know. And I don't really care. <laughs> I know that these are so much fun. And I use these like in, in all the different mediums cold wax and oil. They certainly work in encaustic, you know, and you can bring out these marks. It's very cool. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. And if you have any follow-up questions and you're following along, feel free to put them in uh, the chat. We'll try to grab as many as we could. Pam, are you up for another question? I got another one for you. Of course. Well, because this is more about the blowtorch, my favorite topic. <laughs> the, do you, you know, the question is, do you ever blowtorch the paint to a point where it moves the paint around different shapes? Oh yeah, I mean that that that's why I mentioned my son because I taught him how to, to paint with encaustic and you know there are some people who just love to see the swirly thing going on and that's that's perfectly fine. Um, if you heat something long enough, you're going to start to see the paint move and then it becomes marbled and um, so it is a mess of, of sort of like how much do you want it to do that? You have full control over that. It does take some practice, but um, you know I. I oftentimes have some delicate things going on, so I have to be a little bit careful with my torch. But, and again, if you use a heat gun, then it's a little bit, you know, like that's less aggressive. So if you don't, you know, the propane torch, it does have controls, but I would say the heat gun usually also has two different levels of heat and you have control with that as well. So um, you just kind of have to pick your heat source. So there I've put on the RNF pigment stick and it went over that little wheel tool. Um, and that's the kind of texture you get. It's just really fun. Yeah, any other questions? I'm gonna grab another one. Uh, so this question is, uh, Julie noticed that you're mixing colors right in the heated dishes. You know, do you end up with muddy colors? Is that not, that not a problem at all? Um, you know, it, it does take some understanding of color. Uh, and that's where, again, you know, I just have to stress that I, I didn't know much about color in the early days. I had to, you know, I had to learn. And it all has to do with 
um, like a cool color can be warm and a warm color can be cool. And I didn't even understand that until more recently. Uh, if you understand the, the science or the theory of color, and it's really not that complicated, but if you don't know it, then, um, you know, like you'll get mud and, and there's nothing wrong with mud because mud is a gray. But um, the thing about mud is that there are times when you actually want mud. And, but if you don't understand color and you get mud, then you usually end up being kind of sad because you weren't expecting that. But if you're expecting it, um, and you, in, in, in fact, sometimes you, you want to create mud, then the more you understand about color, um, you know, the better off you're gonna be. It's just, it um, decreases the learning curve when you put in the time to understand just a little bit about color. It's really not that complicated. And that's one thing I do teach um, in my course. Any other questions? Thank you, Pam. Well, can you talk a bit about the, the different coats when we were first starting out, right? I know you talked about preparing the board and I've seen a bunch of different comments uh, in the chat of folks like, you know, kind of talking through their process. Can you just repeat yours? Okay, um, so in my case, what I did for this demo today was I chose, you know, I, I was considering doing like working on six by six inch cradle panel. I could have worked on ampersand panel um, or I could have worked on multimedia artboard or even um, uh, um, Strathmore uh, vellum surface illustration board. But I decided to use, you know, one of my favorite surfaces. Again, these are encaustic boards. So what I did, I put um, a coat of beeswax and then I fused it. I put another coat of beeswax and I fused it. And then the a third layer was encaustic medium. And I do like things really smooth. So I probably heated this uh, because, you know, you get brush strokes and everything, but depending on how you heat it, I mean, this is completely smooth. Uh, there's there's no no brush strokes at all. Now, other times you, you might want to have those brush strokes, but in my case, I didn't want to. So then my next stage is to essentially play. That might mean texturing first. It might mean putting color on first. Um, there's no any like one way that I always play. And I encourage other people to kind of find their way to play that they enjoy. So um, that's kind of what today is about is just letting you know that like these are not meant to be finished works at all. They're meant to show you that um, you can play in encaustic. You've seen other students working in acrylic, cold wax and oil. Um, it's not about the medium. It's about process. It's about the way you think or the, and, and that there is a time to think and a time not to think. So I definitely have to start thinking as, as things progress along, but I've learned that in my own work, I have to put that to the side and not think um, so that I'm allowed to just explore. Um, sometimes you make great discoveries when you just um, allow yourself to play and not get uptight about the finished product. Um, worrying about the finished product is such a, um, it can really shut you down and um, it causes a lot of people to get very frustrated. <laughs> and so um, personally that happened to me. That's why I know that it happens. And so, yeah. Thank you for that, Pam. And a, a recent question is, so between layers, you were, uh, you had a squirt bottle that you were putting onto the, the canvas. Can you go uh, Explain what was in that squirt bottle. You're using that before you wipe down layers. Oh, I think it was this. You mean this? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, this is just cooking oil. And you use cooking oil. So like, um, this is one thing that, again, I'm describing it in my mini course. So funny, because like right now, I'm just like putting it together. But whenever you've got anything oily, and, and again, you don't want to leave a lot of oil on the surface. So like RNF pigment sticks, or if it's oil paint, because you can use both of those things to fill in these textural areas you need to remove the majority of it. And I use cooking oil and a paper towel to wipe off most of it. And then where it's left in these little crevices, that's minimal. Um, and that, so this is just plain old cooking oil. There's nothing fancy here. It's beeswax, it's Demar resin. Um, I actually, uh, I, I, I can teach you how to make your own paint. I can teach you how to make your own encaustic medium, or you can choose to buy it. And you know, that's kind of something that I'm, I'm gonna go into simply because um, I've got a lot of people signed up for the master class and I found out by doing a survey that a lot of them were new and they'd never done encaustic before. So I kind of thought, well, if that were me, I'd kind of want to have a, like a beginner sort of like, um, the mini course is what I'm calling it. So that people are prepared and they kind of know what to expect. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a good time, Erin, to check on the other artists. 
Absolutely. So we have Claudia and Tina that I'm going to be bringing up in just a second. Let me grab them. One second here. Claudia, Tina, can you hear us? Yes. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. All right, Pam, we have Claudia and Tina for checking in with. Okay, let me see what you guys are up to. All right. Oh, look at Claudia. Nice. Hey, that's looking great. You're working with like a limited palette there, huh? Nice. You've got two things. And wow. more. more. <laughs> well, that's what happens when we don't call on you until like toward the end. I mean, you've got so many things going on there. Good yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I just, um, playing is like, for me, it's one of my best stage. I mean, I could be in play forever. Wow. Um, awesome. But I like the flexibility of of playing um, in in the arches paper that we started with, and then going into the um, the cradle boards, and uh, it's so freeing. I mean, for me, it's it's. I think it just kind of goes with my personality. I love the freedom. Wow. Um, you just go here and there, and no one's there's no judgment. You would. You make marks, which I absolutely love. So this is right up my alley. And so uh, it's almost like I'm surrounded by everything I want to do. Um, so I like, I definitely like that. And, um, and with your class, it's just, it, it just goes along with how I like to paint. And cold wax medium is new for me. So I thoroughly enjoyed the class and how you've broken everything down and the videos, you can watch them whenever you want. Um, if I can't sleep, I just turn on and go downstairs and watch my videos. And um, it's just, it's really a wonderful way to learn uh, new materials. And I think the best thing is you do it at your own time. You're, yeah. You do it when you want, when you're in the mood, when you want to go into your studio. It's so it's lovely. It's absolutely okay. lovely. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying that. Um, how about you, Tina? What are you up to? So um, I'm working on getting some um, kind of messy, mm. funny boards. Uh, yes. At the beginning of my paintings. Beautiful. Um, I'm doing two projects today. So this is one of the boards that mm. I've been putting some paint on uh, mm. in the play stage. Yeah, and gorgeous. I, you know, I will say that I'm I'm thinking a little bit because in my paintings usually I I, I always start with my favorite color, and then it's I'm gonna cover that up pretty much. But I use a product called Gamsol to subtract my paint. So example, mm -hmm. I have I had six paintings uh, from the past. I've no it's okay. difficult to see, but they're kind yeah. of boring and you know and. I, I know that I cannot fix them to, to try to make them better. So therefore I decided to go totally back to play stage again mm. and, yeah. and forgot, I will forget everything about what I have done underneath and start to play again. And, and um, it's actually wonderful not to, you know, expect because I'm in the first stage of all yeah. of it. They come from different times and different worlds. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're willing to like to say, you know, because if, if it's not working, you don't have to like a lot of people will actually throw their art away. And that kind of like just doesn't it doesn't work for me when I hear that. I, I'm so distraught when I hear it. So to hear you say, hey, it just means you have to go back to play. Right. And yeah, have yeah. fun. Again. Yeah, I think that's then, really, really great. And another thing that I have learned through your class in the powerful design and personal color is that. You know, I, I have learned so many good things about colors. It's been very mm. simple for me to understand, finally. Mm. Oh. And I, I, I have been doing a palette where I've been working with some grays. So mm. I they're kind of balancing my, my colors. And I love to see the result. So it's not yeah. in East yeah. and West. And, you know, so that's been great. And another detail another things that i've learned through you is also to calm down a little bit and take a good look at what you're doing and 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 and, and, and you know be be more in small details and then go bigger but then 
come back in small details. And that was what I miss in my previous work. I was really? just doing yeah. big, but now oh. focusing on areas now that I really enjoy. Yeah. Well, you're, you know, it's funny when you first worked, uh, posted your, one of the first things you posted in PDPC, I, it, it kind of just took my breath away. And I, I don't know if you did it like before you even uh, joined the course, but, and, um, you know, it just had this ethereal feel to it. It had a certain simplicity, a certain less is more to it. And um, it was a very simple palette. It might be like even the one that, like the one that you submitted for critique. I don't know if yes. you know exactly the one, but those were just so... I don't know. You really captured something, and and I don't know. I just I was really um, attracted to that. It kind of just stopped me because it was so different. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very yeah, nice. twenty twenty have been really difficult, and 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 for me, it's I, I'm starting all over, and therefore I'm in your class, and and I want to continue with that. Um, oh, good. Well, I'm I'm so happy to have you, and thank you so much, both thank of you, you, for joining us here because <laughs> we're all yeah, kind of guinea pigs and. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Keep painting. Okay. All so, right. So, Pam, yes. if you can hear me, I think right now might be a good time, you know, because we're going to leave room for some more questions. And I know we have we have more creations to do. There's more art to create today. Um, I think it would be great if you could just actually talk a bit about powerful design and personal color, uh, you know, the, the, just to give a little bit about the class. And, you know, we, we can share more at the end, but just at least give a little bit of a primer for the folks who are with us because we're about an hour in. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so Powerful Design and Personal Color um, is an online course that is available for life and it's available 24 seven. And I believe it's like 11 hours long uh, and it includes many different modules, but um, the gist of that course is about laying the foundations in art that you may not have gotten, whether you went to art college or I mean, art school, some people have never had formal training um, a lot like for in me, like I, I was self taught for many years. And I had gone to many workshops um, back in the watercolor days, you know, it's not that I didn't have good information, I did. But uh, what I realized was that um, I felt like having a course that um, is all in one place and took um, the 30 years of experience that it really did take me to um, understand in a way that, um, you know, color is not so difficult and design is not so difficult, but it's all about finding your own personal voice. And then once you know what it is you want, then really what's cool about that is you can work in any medium. It's not dependent on the medium. What it's really dependent on is you. So I try very hard in the course to help artists um, find that personal voice. And um, in the course, I, they kind of watch over my shoulder on videos. Um, and I paint 16 paintings in four different color palettes. And, um, and then they do the same. And then we have a private Facebook group where everybody posts their work. And it's a wonderful community. I mean, everybody's so supportive. And they post their work. And um, I choose cover images like once a week and feature art and artists. And, um, and then I've done some live workshops as well um, you know, around the world teaching this. And I guess to my surprise, and I didn't really know what to expect, but um, to my surprise and, you know, really happy that people are um, able to like uh, get rid of that fear that they had. And like, I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of frustration and um, I, I wasn't consistently getting the results I wanted. And um, it wasn't until I, I kind of did my own homework and then put the, what I learned into this course that I now see others doing the same thing and, and they're really enjoying uh, painting again. Um, and it's kind of one of those things. So that's why today what we're doing is we're playing. Um, and I, I have um, a various journey that I walk people through called the nine stages of creativity, which I've already done presentations um, through Teachable uh, about that. Uh, but this is the beginning part. And then I walk people, walk people through what it's like to be in the middle stage where I feel like it's kind of a bell curve. That's where it, it can be more difficult to, to move on. You get stuck and, you know, what do you do? And so I offer some things to think about and how do you move forward when you're stuck and what are some problem solving things? And then the final area is to clarify, you know, what is it you want to present to your audience? So that's what the course is. Um, I am offering a special hundred dollars off for those who are here today um, and I think that Aaron has the link for you and I believe that it's available for about a week. So we'd love to see you. <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing, Pam. And for, for 
per what Pam just said, I actually just put the link in the uh, YouTube chat and it's in the YouTube description as well. And if anyone's watching this as a replay, uh, we'll, we'll include the link in the email um, in case you're interested. Uh, and Pam, you know, uh, Thank you so much for sharing that. We will leave time for some more questions later, um, just because okay. I see some folks here. Uh, you know, I know we have folks still probably in the play stage and, and doing different pieces. If you'd like, we can either move it to another piece. We could check in with some folks. This is your yeah. show. Let's go back to the first two that we started with and see where they're at. I can't remember where we started. It was um... Lisa and Rachel. Yes, there we go. So let's bring them up. Hey, Lisa, let me grab oh. Rachel too. Hey. Nice. You've got some, some lighter colors there now, it looks like. Yeah, lots of gray. <laughs> you <laughs> you gotta get gray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love grays. Good for yeah. you. So how are you feeling? Good. I'm actually, you know, I've smeared stuff around and I've got gray. So now I'm gonna, you know, this is where I start to think maybe and, and um, you know, put in some more darker colors where I want some focal points and things like that. So sure. Good. Yeah. Awesome. How about Still you, having Rachel? fun. Good. How about you, Rachel? What are you up to? Uh, well, I was standing to sort of, uh, to sort of, I mean, you know, this is, this is an ugly play stage. So <laughs> I'm standing some things away and coming up with some, um, you know, some more avenues to play. I'm just going to play, play, play. I'm not really thinking about focal points at all. Yeah. Good for you. I'm yeah. not either. <laughs> Yeah, well, it looks like it. Your work looks like you're thinking about something. Oh, no. <laughs> it's accidental. <laughs> okay. Thanks, ladies. We'll check mm -hmm. back with you later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And whenever you're ready, we could also check in with the second group. I mean, people are just turning around. So if you want, oh. we could uh, actually go grab. Uh, let me see. I think you should. Yep. Absolutely. It would be Janina and Rob. Let me grab them. Okay. There they are. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So Rob, like what, um, what are you, what is your, um, what are you thinking about uh, in terms of even play? Like what, what colors have you chosen? Did you choose a limited palette or is it more of a open palette or what are you doing? I didn't uh, pre-mix some paints before. So I was thinking complimentary blue and orange nice. pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's getting busier with this year, <laughs> but, uh, that's fine. It's all good. No, mis there's no mistakes. And do you um, often work on the wall or do you normally work on a table? These days I almost exclusively work on the wall. That's why it's so messy. Cause I'm always, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm always here. And what um, is your wall? Is that like a, um, panel or what is your wall made of? It's just, um, the, uh, concrete, the, uh, Oh. There's, there's no panel yeah. in front of it, unfortunately. I'm going to have to paint over it at some point. <laughs> or not. I'm <laughs> seeing the screen. You can't... Yeah. <laughs> you can't even see the edge of the painting, right? I need to <laughs> sort that out. Yeah. But um, no, it's a pretty good view, though. We can really see that. Um, you've got that, that wonderful mark making there and yeah, letters. And yeah. And how about you, Janina? Yeah. Well, I thought maybe I could show people. Um, so this is one of Pamela's four square paintings that she talks about in the powerful design and personal color. So it's actually um, a piece of um, mixed media paper that I gessoed and then divided into four squares with tape. But I thought I might show what it looks like when you actually distinguish the Ooh. four squares. So it looks a little different once you yeah. see um, <laughs> the four kind of separate paintings so it, it here it looks really like oh my god that just looks like a dog's breakfast <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and here it it has a little more oh yeah something yeah. i mean even though it's still looks in the stage um yeah i'm just playing with it so i'm just having there's, a great time but there's some great things going on there i mean i'm pretty impressed that that's your play stage and it already looks like it could actually be done you know but that's up to you you decide when it's done but well um, well this is a previous one that maybe looks a little bit more chaotic and and ugly uh and that's yeah don't you love those frames i mean they're just so oh, they're great yeah i just used um 
that Bristol board or whatever you get at the dollar store and I cut it out because I couldn't get the mighty board that you talked about here right. in Canada. But uh, right. you know, we do we artists, we do whatever works. And one of the things that's really fun is like you said, going to the thrift store and finding tools to play with is yeah, great. Yeah. It's like a treasure. So, I, yeah. It's my favorite place to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. We'll check back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Erin, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna probably, do you want me to turn my camera down? Yeah. Okay. But, right. and, and this will give folks some time, you know, I know we've answered a bunch of questions and I'll try to go back through the chat and see what we've missed uh, throughout okay. the session. But yeah. at the very least, uh, for everyone who's still with us, and I see quite a few folks are, um, you know, if, if I missed your question and it's buried deep in the chat, this would be a great time to, to reshare that question. We'll try to bring it to Pam in just a few moments. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so I'm going to just try to put some kind of a yellowish um, glaze. I don't know, sometimes you can't quite tell how much of a glaze it is until you dip in a test strip. That's something I kind of um, have discovered more recently. Let me just uh, fuse this in before I forget. And the propane, um, it like in the torch, it does go a really long way. So that's nice. Oh, it's nice and thin. That's kind of what I wanted. So this is very much a layering medium. Just like you could say that about any medium, but it's just that it's so it's kind of quick because you're dealing with uh, wax and you're only waiting for the wax to cool. You're not waiting for oil paints to dry. And, you know, so that's just kind of fun to be able to come in the studio. Um, I like to do this sometimes as a warm up and I also love to do encaustic monotype. And that's when you actually do this on like rice paper. So that's fun. <laughs> And then I can let this one cool and then go back to this other one I was working on. So again, when you have multiple things going on at a time, it's fun because um, you can just keep the flow going. You don't have to wait, you know, a wait a long time. You can just keep moving on from one to the next. So here I can kind of see how that pushes the form behind because it is opaque and it is still see-through though. So you have... Yeah, control over opacity versus transparency. And Pam, if you don't mind, I actually think there's like some relevant questions. Do you mind if I just bring them up? Of course, that's great. Cool, so in particular, the, the ratio, right? I, I know mm -hmm. you talked about the different layers. Can you speak a bit about, uh, you know, the ratio, ratio of the resin to beeswax? Sure, yeah. I have used um, Joanna, Matera, Joanne Matera's book, and it's The Art of Encaustic Painting. And in her book, she talks about, you know, the very traditional eight parts of beeswax to one part of Damar. And I would just say that um, I've seen some other artists, like they weigh the components to be more accurate, but I was taught just to have one unit of measurement. So it might be like, you know, an empty um, pet food container. Um, that's my unit of measurement. Um, I start out with, I actually melt the Damar resin first, and then just one part might be like a um, eight ounce cat cat food container. I'll let that melt all the way down, and then I'll I'll measure eight of the um, beeswax pellets, throw it into the frying pan, mix it all up together, make sure the damar melts, and then then I'll pour it into a mold. So it's actually you know very doable, and you can do it in about you know less than an hour, make a pretty good amount. And because you go through so much of it, you know. It's, it's a very good way to um, be very economical just making that. I don't think that, you know, I, I don't make as many paints because I really do think that RNF um, paints and, and these other ones that are ready-made, you know, um, they just go a really long way. So if you don't mind, you know, purchasing a few and you can usually get them on sale, that's usually what I do. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Uh, another question that came up, I'm going to actually just bring it up, is 
maximum number of layers you could burn in before the accumulation starts to collapse or degrade? You know, any any input or insights on this? Yeah, you know, it's funny because like I hear that question um, almost in every single medium, like whether it's cold wax or acrylic, and you know, it, it's not um, it's not something I really ever think about. Uh, probably easily can get up to ten layers, and it's more. I think the reason why I can't really say is because um, I'm putting it on, but then I'm taking it off. So, you know, you might be at like uh, 10 layers, but then you just take two off. And so it's kind of an addition subtraction sort of thing. And it's um, really only enough layers to get what you want. And that, that just can change depending on the painting. Right. So that's why it's not like, well, I'm going to do 10 layers today and, and then I'll call it like my painting's done. No, it, it's like my painting could be done in one layer. It could be done in 20 layers or it could be done like in 15 layers. And yeah, I would say that, um, that that's probably true for all the mediums that I work in. So good question though. It's a very good, good question. I hear a lot. Yeah. Pam, I do want to bring up one more question and I know the answer, but I'm going to make you answer it. Um, just to talk about different mediums. Uh, someone asked, you know, they're getting back into painting after a long absence. They, you know, want to continue using acrylics and they asked about, you know, workshops, classes, suggestions, those type of things. And, you know, I, I know from, from past work with you, PDPC covers that. Did you want to speak to that? Cause it isn't just encaustic you cover in PDPC. Oh, correct. In fact. Um, okay. So when I first launched PDPC, um, I was, I had to choose some medium to do the 16 paintings in. And, and again, it's the emphasis in that course is not about the medium. Yes, I'm painting in cold wax and oil, but I have just so many artists in that course who work in acrylic, some work in encaustic, some work in watercolor, like Rachel, who's on this um, the call today. So again, um, the emphasis is really on laying the foundation of art so that you can go and work in any medium. Um, the fact that I'm demonstrating in coal wax and oil, I could have just as easily demonstrated it in any other medium, including encaustic. And so I think that's the point. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, there are a lot of workshops out there. I'm certainly not the only one. And but um, after I launched the PDPC, you know, I... I had some artists that wanted a little bit more information on acrylic. So then I created an acrylic course and now I'm creating an encaustic course and I'll probably uh, create a uh, monoprint course at some point just for fun. <laughs> so great question. Pam, uh, another question I did want to bring up that, you know, you, we, we, it's kind of the title of the workshop, but I think it's worth speaking to is the approach to play, right? Like, mm -hmm. You know, I've, in some of your other workshops, you've talked through how play break comes into your work. I think it would be great just for, for folks who maybe this is the first time they're seeing you today. Can you speak a bit towards that? Like, because pl play for you is an entire, that that's a multiple stages. It's an entire thing. Yeah, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, and the way that I think about play is... Um, it's, it's any period of time. It, it, it's not, um, it's not dependent on how long you do it. it. It more depends on, you know, showing up in your studio, getting out something to paint on, choosing a medium, grab some colors and throw it down. If you only did that, you showed up, um, you did your job. That is your job as an artist. And, you know, not everybody is a professional artist or wants to be one, but we all do want to be productive. We all want to maintain momentum and, and be productive in our lives. So if you can just get your foot in the studio and throw some things around, you're way ahead of, I can tell you that I went through, um, um, got my MFA in grad school and it was very disheartening because um, I took a professional art, artist class with my, my advisor and he told everybody in the class that of all the students who got an MFA, about 90% of them would not continue to make art. And I just thought, wow, I mean, you know, art school is not cheap. Um, education's not cheap. So again, um, I feel that the play stage will get you into your studio. There's, there's no, you can do no wrong. You can make no mistakes. There are no expectations. And if you can really put yourself into the mind of a three-year-old, um, because when you were three, you never thought about results. You never thought about selling work. You never thought about it being beautiful. And um, that just wasn't why you did it. So if you can capture that feeling again, 
um, it just brings you back into the entire um, joy of making art again. And really, once you start, it's like getting on that bike for the first time. Once you get going and those wheels start turning, it will take you through to the end. But if you don't start, you won't get anywhere. And I think that's what happens to so many people. I've seen it again and again. It happened to me. Um, but I plateaued because I didn't have enough information. <laughs> And I just was frustrated because my results were not consistent. Um, and that's where the color and design um, was the answer for me. And I do think that that is the missing thing for many artists. Any other questions? I'm, I'm just grabbing ones here. <laughs> there's been so there's just so many comments. That's it's awesome. Sorting that's through. Um, what I do want to grab is. Uh, keeping track of which cans are opaque, which are glazes, because it's not necessarily obvious when you see them. You know, what? how are you keeping track of this right now? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, well, you know, I, I have my tins that I keep heating and reheating every time I come into the studio. And I know like, okay, one thing that about color is that, you know, the cadmiums are always opaque. So cadmium red, cadmium orange, um, French ultramarine blue is known to be kind of a semi-transparent. And so the nature of certain colors, like on the label, it'll tell you if it's transparent or not. But um, the cool thing is you can take any color that's opaque, like, you know, cad red, um, it's an opaque color. But if I add um, encaustic medium to it, it then becomes a glaze. So any color can become a glaze and um, any transparent can become opaque if you add white to it because white makes it opaque. Um, but it's a great question. And, and obviously, if you only worked with opacity in an encaustic, you would be missing out on half of the world of encaustic. So it's very important to understand um, that your colors, um, just as they come in that block like this, you know, from RNF paint, for example, um, if you dilute this out, you get a beautiful, beautiful glaze. But um, Full strength, it'll be more opaque. And then there are other things like, you know, these, these are just something new I discovered, um, these gelatos. And I'm, I'm very much into mixed media. So not everything has to be done, you know, with your wax. And that was a huge discovery for me because it's not always easy to get, a, you know, I mean, it's, it's another tin you have to have on your hot plate. But you see how you can, you can, you can add something like that that just nudges that color in, in a little different direction. Here's a blue. So if I go over the gray, you know, yeah, I could use encaustic paint, but I could also use one of these and just smear it around. And then again, the addition and subtraction, you have full control over how blue you want that. I mean, I just changed that whole gray. It's different now. So um, it's very much just, um, you know, you, you have a heated palette and you have to determine, you know, how much stuff is on your palette and then decide what paints you want to become transparent and which ones you want to be opaque and, and then kind of just go from there. But like, this is very opaque. You can kind of just see that. And the difference between that one and the quinacridones, the quinacridones are just known pigment classes to be transparent. And so right off the bat, just getting to know your colors. And I do a lot of swatches so that I can actually check the transparency and figure out, you know, where am I at? Because you can't necessarily tell when you're looking at something like this, if it's going to be transparent or not, you actually have to do like a swatch. And so I've been doing a lot of swatches and that does help. Um, this little guy here, I just want to show you that I've gouged it and you can probably see that corner. Um, this is one of my favorite techniques is when you gouge it like that and then you fill up the gouged area. And this is paint. I've made it kind of dark. It's like a dark evergreen. This is what I'm doing right now. It's called intarsia. And I, um, the piece that I have that's on show right now, which is four feet by six feet, um, that whole piece <laughs> was uh, the intarsia. So what happens is you do that and you need to let it cool just a little bit. And I could fuse it now, but I'm, instead of doing that, I'm just gonna let it cool a little bit and I'll fuse it after I scrape it back. So again, the addition and subtraction, can you kind of see how I dug into there and then I filled it in and then at the right moment uh, of it cooling down, you, well, you can actually 
you know, do this at any time when it's really cool. But um, I love that effect. And you have the choice between, I've got a blade here. I could keep going and take all these little bits off. Or what if I like that kind of residue around the line? And a lot of times I like that, you know, and I'll keep it. So it's just endless. This is just such a fun medium because, you know, look at how quickly you can work. And um, the addition of the multimedia to this for me was like, it, it was a game changer because I was able to get the stronger design that I really wanted. I didn't realize that I could use like pan pastels on this and really change the nature. So then you can kind of see how in a very short amount of time I've introduced a brand new shape. Yeah, it's really fun. Pam, what, another question I wanted to bring up, you know, I think that follows up off this is the, how you seal your paintings? You know, I, I know finality is, is, there's a lot more that usually goes into this for you, but, you know, at, at a conclusion, when you're at a point, you're ready to stop. Can you talk a bit about like how you, you seal or finish these paintings off? Yeah, actually the, the cool thing about encaustic is that, um, <laughs> This is the one medium where there is no, um, there's no uh, way that you have to seal it. I wanna grab a soft cotton rig and I'm gonna show you real quick. The only thing you have to make sure is that it's cotton. So, um, so I do clean off my edges and you can coat it with beeswax or like I use cold wax medium sometimes just to, to finish that. But on a finished painting, like the wax is it, there is no coating. But when you buff it with a cloth like this, um, you can, I don't know if you can see how shiny that is, but um, that is the beauty of the wax. And you, you, you know, kind of smell the beeswax and it's really nice. It smells good. And um, like with this one, this is just a practice board. <laughs> But, um, and I did a lot of different effects and mixed media. But again, if you just buff it, the beauty of an encaustic is the fact that there is no coating, there's no varnish. In fact, you can't varnish this. It is what it is. I mean, but that's the beauty. And I just love, this is what I love. When I first saw the sheen of an encaustic, I, I just was mesmerized. I couldn't, um, I just had to learn how to do this. and. I keep coming back to it, but you can see the sheen. Um, now I can get close to this with acrylic. I've learned a four-step technique to do this. My acrylics uh, a lot of times will look like an encaustic, but that took a while to figure out too. And then this one has a monoprint worked into the encaustic surface. This was the monoprint here. And then this is a cradled panel. So this again is, uh, I think this one is an ampersand. Yeah, this is made by ampersand, same company. Um, the encaustic board. And a lot of times I love working on cradle panels because you don't have to frame them. And again, you can buff these at any time. So I have these in galleries and I'll say, hey, you know, would you mind buffing that every now and then? And so again, that sheen is um, something that is very unique to the encaustic medium. Great question. Pam, I'm gonna keep them coming. Another question was around best brushes for encaustic work. And I've seen some great suggestions in the comments, but can you speak a bit about what you're using? Yeah, um, uh, so I started out with these cheap cheap chip brushes. Um, that's hard to say really fast. And, <clears throat> but they're like a, you know, they come at, at the hardware store in various sizes and I still use them. But then I graduated to using these hockey brushes um, and they're really not that expensive, but they, just have a lovely natural bristle. They come in um, different widths. And when I've worked large, I've got as wide as like six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, which sounds crazy, but you're working out of a frying pan now. You're not working out of a little tin. And if you work large, your, your brushes have to scale up. And so I do list my favorite sources for the hockey brushes on my resource page. And just about everything I'm using here, um, I do list them there because it's easy for me to find them. And I click on it, it it's all linked to where I get the thing. So yeah, good question. Pam, I'm gonna, I got another one coming up. So <laughs> have, uh, one of the questions from Judith is, 
have you used uh, shellac burns or do you use shellac burns? I, I know who, um, who I, the, there's a book, I think that um, this gal, and I think she's one of, she's one of the 26 artists who's doing the master class. And I, I saw her do it and then I tried it. Um, I have done it, but uh, I, I don't tend to, um, uh, I don't know, it, it, it gives a certain effect. Uh, I know there are a lot of artists who also like to use alcohol inks with their um, encaustic and, you know, that's great. But um, these types of things can sometimes produce predictable effects. And I'm, I'm, I'm not about prediction. <laughs> I don't want to know what I'm ever going to get. Um, that would just take the fun away from me. So I'm, I'm very aware of it. And I, you know, I think it's a very cool thing. And I think you can uh, find your own way to personalize it. But for me, like, it's just like when you throw salt at a watercolor, I used to do that too. And when I first did it, I thought, wow, that's really cool. And then I started to see everybody else doing it. It's like, oh, well, then I don't want to do it, you know? So I just tried to, um, I don't know. It's just something that I realized with myself, but um, yeah, I do know about that technique. Thank you, Pam. Uh, a question I did want to bring up is from uh, Dominica and she asked, you know, could you, it, about the self pacing and like the access around your course. Um, this is a single mom who, you know, she doesn't, she only has a few evenings a week to, to really go through this thing. Um, I know your course is lifetime access, but I figured you'd have a few words you wanted to add. Yeah. And that's, that's why I made it that way because I figure that, um, you know, and this is way well before COVID happened. Um, I launched this in 2018 in the fall and I just thought, you know, basically everything in the course is like, what would I want if I were that student who um, needed, you know, really wanted to be serious about art, but was a busy person, um, didn't want to have a regimented schedule. And so I, I thought, okay, I'm going to make it lifetime access and you can get in there anytime you want. You just log in with a password and then you see all of my videos and you can track your progress. Um, there's a task bar that allows you to mark a video when you've seen it. And then there are some homework assignments. And then if you're really into it and you want your work critiqued, I now have a master class as well. So many of the people that have joined me today are in my master class. And um, that's when I do a critique of six works every other week. And, and then all of that goes into my library, which now has over a hundred hours of videos. Um, very much like um, the, the style of my YouTube channel, except that the videos are much longer. And I show you everything that um, that is not shown on YouTube. So YouTube is kind of like, here's a little bit of what I'm doing, but my library is like, here's everything I'm doing. And the videos are longer, and then there's quite a few categories. Yeah, good question. Thank you, Pam. Uh, uh a question, actually, I've been all the times I've, I've done a workshop with you, I don't necessarily know this answer, and I'd, I'd love to hear it, is for the finished products, can you talk about how you frame these panels? Like, especially if you're going to frame and then ship, can, like, you were wanted to send this to someone, um, or you sold it and you were going to, you know, had to send it somewhere. Can you talk a bit about that process? Sure. Okay, I can just grab these. Um, <clears throat> So these are not, um, this one's cold wax and oil. Um, and this one is as well, because all of my encaustic right now is at a um, show. But so I get these frames and they're really nice because, um, and these are not, yeah, they're not glued in. So here's my ampersand panel. And I had these made locally by a cabinet maker. I said, this is what I want. I showed him an example. Um, you can see that there's a little bit of an indentation here and it's made for a 12 by 12 inch ampersand panel. So um, it's pretty nice because that's it, you know, and all these encaustics can slip into here. And, you know, I, I have, I do work in 12 by 12 a lot. And I had somebody call me right before this demonstration who um, is interested in um, like a diptych that's 48 by 96. So in that case, then, um, I'm going to have to, um, what I've decided to do is go through like an art transport service. So uh, especially with encaustic, you have to be a little careful how you transport it. And it's actually harder to ship an encaustic in the winter than it is in the warm months because um, these melt at 180 degrees, 150 degrees, and most places don't get that hot 
but it's the cold weather that you actually have to worry about your painting. So there is a right and a wrong way to ship it. Um, but yeah, I've kind of learned the hard way. I, I had work in a gallery and they stored it in this, they were like renovating and they stored it in a barn that had no um, heat and, and it, it just all cracked and fell off. So you can't, um, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful, but it is the cold that can actually be more harmful than the heat. Thank you very much, Pam. I, that actually, uh, that makes sense that you've said it, but I would not have guessed that either. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'll, I'll see. Want me to grab one more question? And, and we're, sure. we're, we're a little bit past the hour and a half mark, so we can grab, uh, we can probably check in with some of the folks. You yeah. know, we are, uh, at some point we're our nearing time. Yeah. The, I do want to grab one more question. I saw it. Sorry about that. I lost it. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Got it. Um, I just lost my screen. So the question is, what about mixing paint such as oil over acrylic, not the other way around? Can you use water-based media with encaustics? Um, okay, so yeah, um, not acrylic, but you can use like um, inks uh, because they are water soluble and they're not plasticky. They're just um, pigmented uh, pigments with water. So I do have inks and um, what you do is you put them on here and you let them dry um, and then you fuse them in now, but you cannot do that with acrylic. So you cannot put acrylic over an encaustic. However, you can work with cold wax and oil over an encaustic. You can also work with just oils over an encaustic. So um, encaustic is one of those mediums that, you know, um, it's, it's great because you can just do things quickly, but then you can also use it as a base to then go on and move in with your cold wax and oil. You can do collage, you can do image transfers, and um, there are just so many things. And that's, that's you know, if, if anyone's really interested in encaustic, that's what the master class is for. <laughs> and I will be one of the instructors. Um, you're gonna get a new video once a week for a whole year. And then that's lifetime access. So I mean, when I when I heard about that, I was like, wow, I'm I'm excited myself to get um, the videos from these other encaustic instructors. And so again, if you if you're interested in looking at that and then getting my mini class for free, that's encausticmasterclass.com. That's my link. Um, it doesn't mention my mini course, but that is my link that that each instructor has. The, each instructor has their own link. So. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pam. I mean, if you're ready, I think we could probably bring the, the yeah, our, our yeah. other students back on stage and we'll bring right. them back uh, as a group. Yeah, let's do that. That was fun. All right. Here we go. Oh, let me switch to this. Here's everybody. Hey. Yeah. It's been so much fun, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for joining all of us. Yeah, it's been super yeah, I, I love how global the group is. So we have a Canadian, we have somebody from Germany, and then Tina's originally from Denmark, she lives in the U.S. And Rachel, you're in Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Claudia, you're in New York. So everybody's kind of spread out. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to say anything about their work or anything else? This was lots of fun. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for having us, Aaron. And thanks, Teachable. Our pleasure. I mean, what I would love, I know we're at time and I know we've answered some of the questions, but I think it would be great if, we, if folks can show, not their, it's I know no piece is finished, but right. it would be great if we could check in with each student and just have a chance to see where are we, right? Let's, let's close with that. Yeah, okay, that sounds wonderful. Who wants uh, to go first? Well, you've seen mine already. So. Yes, okay. Janina, nice job. Very nice. I like all the shapes you've got there. Yeah. Very, very clear shapes. That was fun. Good. Thank you. Okay, Claudia. Nice. You've got a, a monochromatic palette? Yes. Nice. Still playing. Yeah. And I have the little ones. Ooh. Yeah. Beautiful. And some more. Yeah. Good. And then I'm kind of doing a slap board, but you know, 
Um, yeah. Putting all my extra paint in there and then uh, saving that for other paintings. Yeah. So Did no, <laughs> no waste of paint. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> How about you, Rob? Wow. Yeah. Uh, I can okay. zoom in a bit more. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of a bit floral, I think. Maybe I'm sort of looking forward to spring, or I don't know. <laughs> um, I like your shades. I made a complete mess here, but it was, it was great fun. Yeah, I like all the repetition you've got there. And just so like all of you know, because I a lot of you may not have seen his earlier presentation, but oh my gosh, how many photographs had you collected over time that you were like trying to find, you know, what is it that keeps recurring in the photographs you take? And you are like, what, 10,000 photographs or? Yeah, probably a lot more. I mean, before, before I started painting, I just I was taking photos and I had them all on my computer and I was completely overwhelmed by them. Yeah. So you, Pam, helped me kind of get a bit of clarity on that and look through them, sort them, find out what I love, uh, recurring patterns and well, uh, motifs I, and things. I think you helped a lot of people. The fact that you did that whole process of looking at it and saying, you know, what, what are the... Um, recurring threads that I keep coming back to and you kind of categorized and it's like, I see those things in your art now, which is very cool, you know. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Definitely a really valuable exercise I good. can recommend. Good, wonderful. Thanks, Rob. I really Thank like that, that thing that you do in your course about keeping a scrapbook and then writing down all the things that you notice that you like. I think that's very valuable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, Tina, what are you up to? So, um, it's pretty uh, thick now. Ooh. Um, so That's great. But um, I made this a bigger piece, and then I made two, and also pretty large. But that is that is the, the first layer. So I'm looking Beautiful. forward to when it dries. I love your palette. I love your grays. It's really Thank pretty. You. Yeah. So this one is the um, painting that I'm trying to start all over with. It's okay. a little scary. Uh, it was not as easy as I thought, but I'm doing it. <laughs> so this is where yeah. I am. All right. Thank you. Yeah, How about you, Rachel? Um, well, I went with, let's see if this is helpful. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. Um, I went with um, monochromatic black and white, and then I put yellow in it. It's hard yeah. to see. Can you see it? I do, what? and there's like a sheen to it as well. So it has uh, glazing um, on it right now because I uh, glazed yellow over it. But I think what I'm going to do with the black and the yellow is try to do some green values. Mm -hmm. um, I have a tendency to start off very light given my um, – given my experience with uh, watercolor. So I start yeah. off very transparent and then work up to opaque. Yeah, but does that work for you in other mediums? I mean, it, it does work, it's, a, it's a, an approach for sure. Yeah, it works for me really well. It's um, It just seems like it's, uh, yeah, it could be a little time consuming perhaps, just yeah. without so it's transparent, but I really love it. Good. Having a great time. And it is translating over to the watercolor as well. Oh, good. Happy yeah. to hear that. Yeah. yeah. My, my watercolorist, and, and so is um, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks, everybody. I guess, are we at the top of the or the end of the session here? Or? We are. Uh, did we miss anyone? I, did, I, yeah. Did, did, Didn't you miss Lisa? Lisa? Yeah, I think we missed yeah. Lisa. Oh, sorry. I oh, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. I'm, no. I tend to paint like Cy Twombly or Jackson Pollock, so yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I get lots of messy things going on, but it is so much fun. There are so many layers here, yeah. and um, it's hard to see on the screen, but, can you, um, it, you know. Can you hold it closer to the um, your camera? Can you take it off the ball? And... Ooh, yeah. Well, wow, closer we get. I, I see. I see with the vibe. Yeah, there's lots, nice. lots of stuff going on. So, yeah. are you yeah. uh, using a brush mainly as your tool, or? Um, I used the brush in the beginning, um, but then I went to, um, you know, the wedge. Okay. And the. Um, wow. 
what's this thing called? The silicone. Yeah. Silicone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So those are probably plus, you know how you do the stamping with, uh, you know, you squirt your paper on and then you press, yeah. press it on. Yes. I do a lot of that as well, yeah. especially with white. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. Good for you. I can't believe yeah. how much you've done in just a short amount of time. <laughs> you've got the most amount of paint on your panel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually usually stop sooner. So, <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Well, Pam, before we sign off, I did want to take a second and say thank you to all the students who joined us today. Uh, this yes. is incredible. And for everyone who's with us, because I know quite a few people are still watching. They've been with us for the, you know almost two hours. Let's wow. let Pam know in the chat. We appreciate her because wow. I appreciate you hosting us today. Yes. This was really fun. Exactly. Oh, thank Pam, you. thank you. This was wonderful. Oh, so, well, thank you. If I could just say, um, everybody who has joined us, if you could thank um, Aaron and Kake and Teachable and say, hey, we want you to do this again because you guys, that was fun, right? You yes. all who joined? Yes. I, yeah, I will good. say, yeah, let, let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it too because it, yeah. we do look at that and that does help us determine what we uh, put on. So yeah. Yeah, I, I put a survey in there at one point too. If you clicked oh. it, thank you for the feedback because that, that's how we we're all, we always tested things out. And, you know, this was a, an idea Pam really helped us put together. Well, if you guys could all give Aaron a thumbs up, like big thumbs up, that would be awesome. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you. With that, we're going to sign off in just a few seconds. I did want to, uh, last housekeeping things, for everyone who joined us, Pam mentioned PDPC. She's offering $100 off for the next seven days. You know, the link was in the YouTube chat, which I'm sure got buried at this point. It is in the description of this video, and we'll send that out after. We appreciate everyone who joined us today, and uh, most of all, Pam, thank you for being with us. Wow. With that, we're going to sign off. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank so much for being with you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Awesome.